Ohio State plays Wisconsin Saturday. This game looked a lot bigger preseason than it does now, but the model in Vegas way detached on this one. So it bears breaking down. This is a Saturday 7.30 Eastern kickoff on NBC. There is an age-old internet philosophy when it comes to college football. Uh, This philosophy was born on message boards. And the philosophy is if fan bases aren't focused, there's a concern that the team may not be focused. Now, the general public has always been sharply divided on this. Some people think if your local message board isn't focused on your upcoming opponent, that's just a reflection of how the entire program feels. And then there are other people who think, no, no, a football player thinks totally different than fans do. Well, I don't really have a strong feel on this either way, but I hope the latter is right when it comes to Ohio State, because I took it upon myself to go over to bucknuts.com earlier today, and I counted 13 threads about the Michigan investigation and one about Wisconsin. You people better get your minds right. Or, conversely, what you think has no bearing on the game whatsoever, and you can talk amongst yourselves about whatever you want. I got some trivia, paper-popping trivia. It's very simple. Who's the starting quarterback for Wisconsin? Jeopardy music. Jeopardy music. Exactly. It's Braden Locke. What? That's not Tanner Mordecai. No, friend. I hate to be the bearer of bad news. Tanner Mordecai is out with a hand injury, I believe. Injury of some kind. And Braden Locke is in. B-R-E-Y-D-Y-N. And I don't know. Country of origin. Can I use it in a sentence? I don't know. Uh, There is an E on the end of his last name, Jesse. Okay, so we had this wrong in our pre-show meeting. This is the attention to detail that you have come to expect from the kind of show that told you, for example, Alabama already has a conference loss the other day, even though they don't. Yes, I got corrected on that. So... My apologies. Anyway, this is a redshirt freshman, Braden Locke. He is a former three-star, number 25 quarterback in the 2022 cycle, right on brand. He's already transferred once from Mississippi State to Wisconsin. Now, he started against Illinois. That's the last game they played. 21 of 41, two touchdowns, uh, 240 yards passing, and they came from behind. I think they were down 21-7. So they came back. They were on the Ramen Noodle Express because all we do is bet backup quarterbacks. Having said all that, this is a Braylon Allen game. Running back there for Wisconsin, he needs to shine. He's averaged 5.9 yards per carry this year. He's second in the Big Ten in rush yards per game. He's got to get it done Saturday. Everybody knows that. Um, Ohio State can't be loose. That's what they can't be. They can be tight. I don't really even care if Ohio State plays tight. They can't be loose because turnovers, shaved possessions on one end, added possessions on the other end, Hidden yardage, special teams, nonsense. That's how Wisconsin wins this thing. You know how else they win it? Luke Fickle. That's how else they win it. He knows a thing or 10 about Ohio State. So the looser you are, the longer you let them hang around, it's their home stadium. Um, We'll see. I'll show you what the model thinks in a second. I was going to spoil it there. Ohio State needs to find its ground game, though. Speaking of which units need to take over, Um, What if I told you Ohio State's 101st in the country in rush yards per game? You'd probably tell me rush yards per game doesn't matter. When it's 101 in the country, it does a little bit. Now, Ryan Day says Travion Henderson, among several players, they expect back this week. I think Burke, they expect back. Egbuka, they expect back. So it looks like they're getting closer to being full speed here. Wisconsin defensively is a team you can run on. 64th in the country in run yards per game given up. Um, But Ohio State, man, 2.9 yards per carry. That's what they've averaged the last four games. But they're still undefeated. Got to pick it up. Still undefeated, though. Wisconsin's defense, 20th in points per game allowed. The pull-away potential here, I think, is low. Ohio State famously has already played Notre Dame and didn't score 20. They played Penn State last week. They scored 20. They, in those two games, uh, have combined for 37 points, I think it was. So, I mean, they're averaging like, they're averaging in the teens in those two games. Is this the kind where they're going to hang 40? I don't necessarily think so. And the Luke Fickle factor matters here. I can't quantify how much it matters. In fact, Colin, let's go ahead and show them what the model says. So the current FanDuel numbers on this game, you can get Ohio State minus 14 and a half right now. And FanDuel also has the total at 
43 and a half. Again, the implied message there is we don't expect a lot of scoring. So when the spread's Ohio State minus 14 and a half, what do we need here? What do we need? If that total is, is roughly accurate, man, if, if I get 13, if I get 17 out of Wisconsin, I got a real shot here. And the model thinks it's going to happen. In fact, the model has Ohio State winning by just nine. And so I'm looking at this, and I also know how distracted things have potentially been up there this week. And I know it's a letdown spot. Ohio State just played Penn State. Uh, Wisconsin is looking to salvage a season at this point. I think Wisconsin is going to find a way to hang around as well. And so I'm going to take Ohio State to win. I'm going to take Wisconsin to cover. And people will probably speak ill of Ohio State, and I'll probably be sitting here Sunday saying, nope, survive in advance, that's all you need to do, and that'll be that.